Hello and welcome to Daily Coaching Lockdown Football Training Session. So today's session number 18 and today I have four key parts to our session for you. So we're going to start off with a warm up, then we're going to move into a ball movement exercise, then we've got a passing exercise, then we'll be finishing off with a ball mastery challenge. Okay. So for the warm up, all you need is a space and a ball. So once you've got your space and once you've got your ball, we're ready to go. Cool, so this warm up is not too physically demanding, okay, but we are going to be getting our body parts nice and loose for our activity. So, what you're going to do is you're going to start with a hand in the space, start in a squatted position, so shot feet shoulders apart, okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to be putting the ball through, passing it through your hands in a figure of an eight, okay, so your feet are actually moving nowhere, but we're getting our arms and our hands uh, nice and loose for our activity, okay. So, squatted position, ball through, ball through, ball through, ball through. Ball through. We're going to keep on doing this in this motion. Okay, start off slowly to begin with, just to get the rhythm and the routine going. Understanding where the ball has to move. Through, 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 through. Like so, okay, again, get more comfortable, we start to speed up a little bit. We're still making sure that we don't drop the ball. Making sure that we're in a nice, smooth, Rhythm to the movement of the ball. Okay, so we've got our arms nice and loose for activity. Quite a good one for a goalkeeper as well. Okay, try and keep your head up if you can, so we're not aware of um, the ball. We know where it is, we can feel it, but we're not actually physically even there. Okay, cool. So again, if you want to, you can go in the opposite direction. Okay. They can just shout out, change direction, and obviously you look to go in a different direction. Okay? So just change it up. Change direction. Change direction. Again, just keeps us a little bit more aware and um, apparent to what's going on and how to react quickly. Okay? Cool. Let's become more confident. You can do it whilst on the move. Forward, going backwards, maybe going side to side, but always keeping your, our feet shoulder width apart. Okay, that's the important thing here. We need that space for that ball to be able to travel through. Okay, taking a little step forward, little lunges forward. Okay, just trying to get the movement going. Also, challenge myself. This is coordination, this routine, and this rhythm. Cool, okay, again, very similar. Obviously, get that person who could be shot, change direction if you need to, just to try and change things up a little bit, and really try and challenge our way and control that we have with the ball, okay? Cool, next thing you would do, squat position again, okay? And this time, you're gonna put your hands, one in front of you, one behind you, okay? So you can show you from the other side as well. One, one in front of you, one behind you, and uh, holding onto the ball. Okay, and then what's going to happen is you're going to slightly throw the ball, not too high, but just slightly throw the ball. And you're going to quickly react and catch it. Okay, catch, 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 catch. So I'm slightly getting a bit of height for the ball just to allow me enough time for it to get my hands around to react and get to the other side. Okay. Ball's not going forwards, ball's not going backwards. Okay, this one's quite good because what it does is it makes you react quickly. Okay, you're having to make quite rapid uh, and quick movement to be able to move your hands and adjust your hands to be able to catch the ball again. Okay, so it's quite a good one for quick changes of speed, okay, and quick movements being made as well. Okay, so the second one then, can you change um, hands as well, but not directly necessarily, but Put the other hand behind you, other hand in front of you. Okay, then. Oh, my for a bit. Come on. Cool. 
and so on. Okay? So again, another good one, like I said, to make rapid movements, good coordination one, and again, very effective for goalkeepers for getting us nice and warm now, okay? Getting our bodies nice and loose, ready for our activities. Cool, final one, okay, if you get in a bit of a lunging position, okay, so we have that. Okay, then what's gonna happen is they're gonna make a lunge, but I'm gonna do this slowly, so I might let it all drop just so I can show you the movement, okay? As I do that, I'm then lunging forward, okay? Luckily, I've got a little cat just in the last time. Okay, so you're making these continuous lunging forwards, so we're gonna let it all drop, stay hard, lunging forwards and lunging backwards, okay? So, hold up. Okay, so I'm going to do that for about 30 seconds now. I'm just going to do it repetitively. You need to make movements quite quickly because otherwise, the longer you take, the slower you take, okay, the uh, number one, feet start to get quite fast to the floor, and number two, um, it slows the movement down, it slows the repetition. Uh, okay, it makes it a little bit harder to see in that room or that routine. Right, so, ready? Go. Oh, don't drop it. space or too much of the area which he was working in okay however there was a big physical demand on the muscles in which he was using okay obviously he was using a lot of movements with our arms okay moving them in different directions okay and then as well really important that when we were doing in that squatting position we were really starting to feel a burn within our legs okay but really important that with that one like i said it was just getting our body nice and loose and flexible ready for our activities okay and also as well like i said quite an effective one for a goalkeeper too okay in terms of the ball handling them and but as well, mentally, there's a good um, psychological element of that in terms of the coordination, okay, and just understanding how to actually move our body um, and move the ball as well, okay, in terms of actually passing from hand to hand and also catching as well. Cool, now we're gonna move into our ball movement exercise. And for this, you're gonna need a space, you need five different objects. I have cones, but again, if you don't have access to cones, as always, get your hands on something like jumpers, jackets, trainers, cans, or possibly toilet rolls, okay, and you need a ball. So once you've got your space, once you've got your five objects, and once you've got your ball, we're ready to go. Right, so this ball movement exercise, what you're going to be doing is you need to set down the five objects like so, okay? So you're creating kind of the left and right, right? We've got three of the cones um, in the light, and then you've got the final two objects um, outside, and then you've got the set of like a capital Y, all right? And then what's gonna happen is with this ball movement exercise, you're gonna start at one end, Okay, and you're going to be moving in and out of the cones using both of your feet, so walk through it so you can move in and out of the cones. Once you get to the end, you're going to move from both of these wider cones, okay, and then back round to the start again. Okay, and you can see it for about 30 seconds to a minute. I said you just get loads of different touches actually on the ball, okay, um, and just exploring with our left and our right and our different parts of our feet. Okay, and then again, obviously, when you react, you go around to the wider area once you've gone through those initial three. Right, so in and out of the cones, different parts of our feet, then around, both of those points of the cones, then back to the start. Bye. 
they start to move round, we just put them back into position. Obviously, the bigger area you have, the more space you can have between these objects. Um, the smaller area you have, it's less of a secret, uh, more of a challenge to be able to keep the real close control of Okay, cool. Once you've done that, okay, we're now going to make this journey. So we'll go in and out of the boat, in and out, round the two white ones, and then Take it on a journey, uh, keep a close control of the ball, or just these different parts of the feet, 
in terms of providing up to you both got to be, okay, getting lots of repetition in there and lots of uh, opportunity to become comfortable and confident moving with the ball. Give it a try, see how you get on. Cool, so that was our ball moving exercise. Now remember some of the key points take away from that is that we're making lots of repetitive movements and journeys on the ball, okay? So understanding the importance of using different parts of the feet and our left foot and our right foot, okay? To actually, number one, help us move the ball, uh, take the ball with us on our journey, and most importantly as well, keeping the ball actually under control, okay? And that's why it's so important in using these different parts of the feet and our left and our right foot so that we can react quicker, keep the ball with us under control and maintain it and keep it with us on our journey, okay? It's really important that when we do lots of repetition, okay, even on the final part where we've done the reaction, again, if the ball is under control and it's with us by our feet, and if we use our left or our right foot, okay, or combine those movements together, it allows us to make that reaction a little bit quicker okay and a bit more naturally too cool now we're going to move into our passing exercise and for this you're going to need a space you're going to need a flat surface so a wall or a door indoors or outdoors okay you're going to need eight objects now what i need you to do is four objects need to be something which can just obviously go on the floor and the other four need to be something which can be put on top of those original four objects okay so i've got some cones as my original four objects and i've got some toilet roll to put on top of those cones okay and obviously you need a ball so once you've got your space once you've got your flat surface, once you've got your eight objects, and once you've got your ball, we're ready to go. Cool, so this part of the exercise, what we're going to do is you're going to set up your eight objects like so, okay? So I've got four cones, okay, or four objects which can have objects on top of them. So I've got my cones set up in a square shape, and I've got my four remaining objects, which are these toilet rolls, just to go on top of each of those objects, okay? And what you'll do is you'll start inside this square, okay, you start the ball on the floor, and what you're going to do is you're going to start off by using the sole of our foot as a technique to try and aim and direct towards the end target, okay? So when you use my sole of my foot, left or right, doesn't matter, you can maybe start with the left end or you can move on to your right, okay? What's going to happen, obviously the bigger space you have, obviously you make the area bigger so that the um, ball can travel over a further distance and it makes the change a little bit harder. So what's going to happen is I'm going to use my sole of my foot, throw the ball, knock off the object. Get the ball back in the middle again. So the foot, knock off the object, okay? Or the middle, so the foot, knock off an object. Or the middle, so the foot, knock off the object. One of them knocks them all down, set the area back up. Take it back to the top. Keep light on your 
inside, the outside, the sole, and probably the laces, okay? But try to heat all of them in as many different combination types of movements as possible, right? So you have 30 seconds, and you're just gonna try and see if you can use as many different parts of the feet as possible, okay? Slightly moving around the space, okay? But um, again, key thing is not necessarily the, the area of the covering, but just number of touches, right? So just use the next three, two, one, go. and so on, okay? So again, left foot only, many touches you can, I think I may have made about 50 different touches there. Yeah? Again, being comfortable, confident, using, the, using that move in the ball, take it with me, using these different parts of the feet, okay? Then you go to your right foot, do the same thing.
good in terms of understanding how to move these different techniques in different parts of the feet, okay? But also really important, okay, that as we're making these movements, um, they're unpredictable. We catch some people by surprise. Most of the time, you probably don't even know the direction you're moving in, let alone defenders, okay? And we're constantly keeping that ball on the move, okay? So the movement becomes too predictable. Defenders don't have that much time and space to actually close you down, okay? You're constantly moving around and they don't know where the ball's going. So, really good one technically, really good one in terms of start the movements on the ball, understanding different parts of the feet and different outcomes which they have. But again, very physically demanding, all right? So only 30 seconds short bursts, um, which you do each exercise a repetitively amount of time, so over a number of times, just to try and see the differences in feet which you're more comfortable with um, and how, when you combine the movements with both your feet, um, how that looks differently as well in terms of traveling over different distances um, and how that actually is a benefit of using both feet rather than just one. Give it a try, see how you get on, start for 30 seconds, then maybe go to a minute, but again, really good one to do in your own time, your own space, over a petty amount of time. Give it a try, see how you get on. Cool, so that's the end of session 18. So just very quickly to recap on some of today's key points, okay? So today was all about exploring, becoming comfortable and becoming confident in executing movements or techniques, okay? So obviously movements on the ball, okay, when we've done our ball master exercise and our ball movement exercise, just understanding how to use both of our feet, inside, outside, sole of the foot, laces, okay? And combining all those movements together to help us move the ball, move with the ball, and to help us keep it under control, okay? And in terms of techniques, about becoming comfortable and confident, it was just about understanding how to execute these different weights behind the ball, passes behind the ball, power behind the ball, okay, and speed at which the ball needs to be traveling, when obviously we're making passes to try and make sure that they're more accurate and obviously to get to the target quicker as well, okay. Really, really important that again with today's exercise, a lot of repetition happens because we really want to become comfortable and confident and understand why we're actually using these different techniques, okay, and how they're going to help us, how they're going to have different outcomes um, effectively in different scenarios and within different situations. Cool. As always, I hope you liked today's session. Please make sure that you subscribe, like, comment, interact with the video. Let us know how you get on. Share some of your feedback. Let us know how the session went for you. Okay, let us know any type of sessions which you want to see coming up and we'll be sure to try and get them in as well. But as always, hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Look forward to seeing you in the next one and I'll see you soon.